In a recent video on the Samsung 9100 Pro NVMe SSD, we were showing how to install it into a Gen 5 slot on your motherboard, I showed a few different things of interest, not least of which was the speed of the drive, but also how it still got pretty hot, maxing out at 94 degrees C under load. If you look at the specs of the drive, you'll see this is not ideal and can lead to some problems in terms of the operating temperature. So for this video, I thought it'd be interesting to compare the standard non-heatsink version of the 9100 Pro against its big brother, the one with the heatsink. I was curious to see what the performance difference would be like if you happen to have a motherboard that would support the low profile standard NVMe drive without a heatsink on it and perhaps cater to it with a large and capable heatsink. This tough gaming motherboard, for example, has a large and chunky heat shield over the Gen 5 port, which could be particularly good and may well offer better cooling performance than the standard heat shield included with the Samsung drive. And it's not the only one. There are plenty of modern motherboards that I've seen recently that have large heat shields over these fast ports. Gen 5 drives can run particularly hot, so it's important to use something like this to improve the performance, make sure it runs cool and gives you the speeds that you're paying for. If you take a look at the size of this thing compared with the heat sink on the Samsung drive as it comes, for example, you'll see it stands significantly taller. But is that all just for show or does it actually make a difference? I wanted to be able to test out to see what the performance difference would be like in terms of the temperatures and what impact that would have on the read write speeds and the overall performance of the drive. So in order to do this, I've got a crucial P310 drive as my operating system drive on this motherboard. And then I'm going to put the heatsink version into the Gen 5 port at the top to begin with, test that and then swap out for the non-heatsink version and use the shield from the motherboard to see what the difference is between the two. I thought this would be a fairly fair test in this Corsair Frame 4000D build that I've just recently done and we'll see how we got on with it. And actually some pretty interesting things have come out of it that I wanna to talk to you about as we go through that might be useful for your build or if you're thinking about running one of these drives in your system. So I'm using Crystal Disk Mark as I normally would for benchmarking purposes and Hardware Info 64. Now this is particularly useful because you can use it to dive into the system settings and to get some interesting data out of here. You can go into the devices and into the drives. So if we drop down to the NVMe drives here and then click on the Samsung drive, you'll see that when we go to the 9100 Pro, you can see that it's an NVMe drive. It's got four lanes. It's running at 32 giga transfers per second and is indeed on a Gen 5 port. So if you click onto the host controller, you can see it's Gen 5 version. It's got four lanes of bandwidth as it should have. So it should run at the maximum speed. And what I found is that in this instance, it's getting 12,000 megabytes per second read speed. Actually, this isn't what it should be. And I did a previous video on it in a different motherboard where I got better speeds out of it. So that was quite interesting in itself. But one of the things that I found while doing multiple tests on this, so I did several passes of Crystal Disk Mark on here, is as you can see, once again, the temperatures got pretty hot. So I got up to 90 degrees C maximum on the drive temperature while doing these benchmark tests on it. However, I wasn't 100% happy with the rewrite speeds and how it was performing. So I wanted to make sure that this was a freshly updated system and running as it should be. So it's a brand new install of Windows, update that, get all the drivers, then head over to the BIOS pages and look for updates over there. Now, this might well be worth doing, especially if you're running a core ultra system as I had, because we've just got the Intel 200S boost updated in the BIOS there. And then we've got a number of other stabilization and, and microcode improvements that could improve RAM and other things. So I figured this might be worth trying to see if it improved NVMe speeds as well, and a number of other things to do during this process to make sure everything was nicely updated and running at the best possible settings. So I took time to do this, to download this update and to get the new BIOS installed on there as well as the ME version and a, a variety of other driver updates. But the important thing here is also looking in the BIOS and making sure the settings are corrected and I'll get to that a little bit later on. 
But with this update comes the 200S Boost, which I've mentioned. Bauer's done an interesting video on this, on how it's improved performance for Intel's Core Ultra CPU lineup. But you do have to do a BIOS update in order to access it. So once the BIOS is updated, if you go to the Advanced tab, you should find that there's an option in there to be able to change these things. So go to the Advanced mode, and then what you want to do is to go into the AI Tweaker section on our Zeus motherboards at least. Now we've got Intel's default settings here, obviously, and then you've got the performance mode, but you'll notice there's a new thing here, Intel 200S Boost. You can turn that on and it will give you an overclocking that's still within the warranty. So it's actually gonna increase performance without going against Intel's warranty or causing any problems with the CPU in theory over time. So a nice little enhancement there that's worth doing and hopefully help support other things, including stability and just general overall performance of the system and boost to RAM. As I said, Debao's done a really cool video on this that I'll link to in the description as well, but I thought it was worth highlighting while we go through this. Next thing that's worth doing is using Samsung Magician. Magician is useful in a variety of different ways because you can run diagnostic scans. So if you do find for some reason that your drive isn't running as it should be, and you're not getting the best possible speeds, it might be worth running one of these tests to see if there's any issues with it. As you can see, that wasn't in mine. But you also have a performance optimization section where you can turn it into full performance mode, and this will automatically apply a number of different settings that are theoretically meant to help with the drive improvements. Reboot, and then you're into that, and you can see that you can run a performance benchmark from here. So I use Magician benchmark and crystal disk mark to run several tests with this heatsink drive on the system again just to remind you this is a additional drive to windows so windows itself isn't running off this there's currently nothing on the drive it's been freshly formatted but it has been used before in previous builds i'm still only getting 12,000 megabytes of second read speed though which isn't as high as it should be and as you'll see if you look at Hardware Info 64, the temperatures are again too high. So even with this standard heatsink, it's just getting over 90 degrees, which makes me think this is what's causing the issue. So you will have noticed the read speeds were good. The write speeds were not good at all. It was about 2,000 megabytes a second write speed, which is fairly strange. This case has also got 10 fans in it, it's worth noting. We've got six intake fans in there and then four exhaust fans. So it's not shy of fans, and they're pretty decent cooling fans as well. So it's not like it's a case that's very choked and likely to be getting overly hot. So the performance here is just not very good. So with that in mind, I went about taking the system apart, and then I'm going to remove the drive from that top slot and replace it with the standard non-heat sink version and make the most of that thick heat shield that we've got that then cover the drive. Note the stickers are still in place. Don't remove the stickers, but we do need to make sure those thermal pads are available to be able to cover that over. So any stickers on the thermal pads above and below should be removed. And obviously this test is going to vary depending on your heat shield. I've seen smaller ones, some with no heat shields or not very good heat shields on them so it's really going to vary from motherboard to motherboard but it should still give some interesting results my gut feeling has always been that the manufacturer of the drive would know better and the shield that they would provide would be better but i think there might be some compromises here for the sake of playstation for example so if we go into windows now we then have to use the disk management tool to then format the drive and give it a drive letter because obviously it's a brand new drive it's not been used before and we want to be able to assign that so that we can then use it and set up in Windows. I went through the same process though. So clean drive here with the crucial P310 drivers, the operating system driver, and this is an additional drive. Then I went into a Samsung Magician and set it into performance mode and obviously making sure these tests are running the same way. So once again, I was doing the benchmarks with Crystal Disk Mark and with Samsung Magician. What I found here is the read speed was similar, so it didn't make any difference to the read speed. The read speed is again 12,000 megabytes per second, which isn't as fast as it should be, which is strange. And I'll show you something to change in your motherboard settings if you do find this is a problem. Because as I said, in a separate motherboard, it was actually better than this. But there are some BIOS changes you might be able to make to improve it. And 
the end of it shows that the write speed is now the same, comparable, and much higher than it was with the heatsink version. The other thing you'll notice is the drive temperature is less. So the maximum temperature now is 81 degrees C on the drive temp. And so even in multiple passes, it never went red. So it didn't go over that and into the 90 degrees. So it's definitely running cooler with the motherboard heat shield than it was with the heatsink version of the Samsung drive, which I think is worth noting. If you've got a decent heat shield, buy the non-heatsink version because you'll find your drive temperatures are lower. So although it did get toasty at some point, so 83 degrees C here after multiple runs, this is multiple back-to-back -back runs, which are unlikely to do in general use, it was nowhere near as hot. It didn't get up into 80 degrees. Now, one thing to go to do is to go into your BIOS settings into the system agent configuration settings and then the PCIe Express settings and check the port they're using and see if you can set it to Gen 5. That might help if you are having any issues where the drive isn't running at the maximum speed. It might be that it's set to a lower speed, for example. If you do that and then save those changes and restart, you might find that that helps with performance. I've unfortunately not managed to get it up to 14,000 megabytes a second read and write speeds on this system, but I do know that it will do it. And I do think that bringing the temperatures down with a better heat shield has been the saving grace for this. So it is definitely worth considering doing that. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, check out the links in the description to other related videos on this build or on NVMe drives that you might find helpful. Thanks for watching.